Mother's Day, when I said Happy Mother's Day, the ladies went wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to the church. I say Happy Father's Day. Father says, yeah. <laughs> Let me say it again. Happy Father's Day. And you. Come on, brothers, don't let me down. <laughs> Congratulations to Mrs. Cranman and all others who have celebrated birthdays and anniversaries. A very special welcome to the members of Mrs. Dean's family worshiping with us this morning on Father's Day. Her strands of courage, her wisdom, her determination, and devotion will always be remembered. My those of us who got to know her and the members of this church. I, I keep really saying that um, we've got to develop a new diva. You see, she used to come in here with those hats on and uh, a little pinky used to bother her, but then she dropped those, those old flat shoes off out of the car, put her heels on, and she came in like a diva. We should all miss Call the Dicty Lee. This Father's Day, they tell me that um, the latest research is proven that um, on Father's Day, the restaurant make as much money as on Mother's Day. Do you believe that? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> They're just trying to pump us up, that's all. Make us feel good, right? Never, never. They're the brothers, some of the brothers out there fishing right now. Most of the rain and they tell me you're the good church. At the earliest service this morning, I used the theme, <clears throat> what is the color of your manhood? And I got in trouble. <laughs> Some people were thinking of one thing, I was thinking of another. <laughs> so I'm gonna color myself and say that I want to talk to you this morning very briefly about what is the color of your manhood, but I want to narrow it down a bit to say by manhood, I mean, what is the color of your character? Yes? Yeah. The lady in orange says, you better clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> the story is told of a little boy who was sent up to bed by his father. It was late. And his father, about uh, 11 o'clock that night, decided he was going to go to bed. The son of the boy who had gone to bed at nine o'clock was asleep. Came up and found the light shining from under his door. The father was quite concerned. He said, I thought he was sleeping. So he opened the door and there's the little boy on the floor just painting away to his heart's content. His father said to him, I thought I sent you to bed around nine o'clock uh, earlier. He said, you did. He said, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm sorry. You've got to go to bed. You've got to go to school the next day. But the boy says, I understand that. I know that, Dad, but I'll be through in a little while. No, his father said, you're going to be through now. Get to bed. The boy said, Dad, I just want to finish what I'm doing. His father said, what are you doing? The little boy said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the dad said to him, foolish boy, nobody's ever seen God. What is your drawing like? He said, Dad, I know nobody's ever seen God, but when I get through drawing him, they all know what he looks like. <laughs> so I asked the question, if Somebody was going to draw a picture of your manhood, meaning your character. What would it look like? Listen to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 26, 8. And God said, let us make man. And God said, let us make 
man. Verse 27, 8. And he made man in his image. God's image. Not a figment of his man in imagination. Not something, not something he had in his mind to yet to come, but something that he had in his mind that already was. And he created man in his image. Later on, we sing this song by the psalmist who asked the question, And who is man? Psalm 8. And the answer is, What is man? that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man, that thou art conscious of him. You love him. You honor him. What is he? The answer comes forth. You have made him not like an angel, because he lives on earth. He is of the earth. He is not of the heavenly being. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, but you have crowned him with majesty, glory, and honor, with intelligence, with strength, with integrity. You created that man. And you created that man because it takes that kind of man to manage your world. So I ask, what is the color of your character? Well, let's take a look at this little boy Joy. I would have ever more to think that this little boy had as his background a nice soft blue. I'm not an artist, and so I have to be careful because I do have an artist in presence. But there's some colors that one needs in order to do art. Is that right, Mr. Grimm? Basic colors. I could be wrong. But I would like to think that this little boy had a nice blue background. Blue? You say, why blue? I'd like to think that this color that was blue was sort of setting the tone. A nice soft background, nothing rough, nothing hard. But a masterpiece is going to be drawn on this canvas. So let's, let's keep it nice. Clear and beautiful and great. Let's keep it light. And I like to think that boy had in this picture a splash of red that in my mind represents the blood of Jesus Christ, the kind of blood that is redeeming, the kind of blood that has strengthened it, the kind of blood that says, I am a part of the universe and therefore responsible for the universe and all that is right and wrong in the universe. Then I'm going to expect to shed my blood to redeem fallen mankind. I also like to think that somehow you can't get away from it. There was this bucket of black. Somehow there, taking its rightful place, setting all of the right riches and corners so that you will see strength. They just say black is beautiful. How can you have a picture without black in it? Somehow it's there it, because, because it has to be there. It can be nowhere else. But I can think this a dash of pink. What's pink represent to you? What's pink represent to you? Hmm? Tell me, what does it represent to you? Pink. Hmm? Say? All the other nations. They could. But lightness and gladness, gaiety, fun. It's your character must have all that is in it. And it has to have green 
Because being, as far as I'm concerned, has to do with growth. We are always growing. We must always be growing. Never standing still. Never giving up. Always learning. Then I'd like to see some yellow in it too. And that says that us brothers, sometimes we do give up when we shouldn't. Like when we should be strong, we give in. When we take our stand, we fail to do so. When we should have courage, we back off. We've got to have some yellow in there because it talks about us being of the earth. But it also needs to have some purple. Because those are the moments we have to come to deal with our sorrows, our sadness, our sins, our lack of forgiveness, our faults, our inability to forgive ourselves and therefore we cannot forgive others. We're going to have a lot of white in there too. But what is a picture without some white? What is life without some brightness? Without some gaiety? Without living your lives courageously? Without being adventurous? What is life? Lastly, my friends, our lives should have what I call a smattering of silver and gold. Because remember, he didn't just create man, he crowned his effort in honor, glory, majesty, and power, and therefore we ought to gladly wear those crowns on our heads where God has blessed us with certain strengths to protect, defend, to lead and direct. So my friends, I ask you fathers, brothers, what is the color of your character? If somebody were to draw a picture of your character right now, will they see all these colors in there? Or will they see as this drab? And nothing, nothing's worse than a brother who's, who's so sad. A man and a man is sad. I mean, the, the whole world is shut down. When women are sad, they, they look pretty, you know. They need, they need to be comforted by us. When a man and a brother is sad, I know what you do. The sisters don't even know what you're sad about. You know. We're not meant to be sad. We weren't born to be sad. We were created to be sad. We were created to be the partners of the women that, that the females has given us. He's crowned our efforts with honor and glory. And he said, I want you to manage my world. You can't do it by yourself. That's why I'm giving you an helper. But I want you to stand. I want you to stand and stand firm and stand tall and be a man. And be responsible. If I have one criticism about what happens in our island home, is that nobody, very few people seem willing to accept responsibility for the positions they hold and when things go wrong, say, I am responsible for it. We hide. We blame everybody. We blame the man. We blame our parents. We blame the police. We blame our teachers. We blame everybody. We were not meant to be blameless. We were meant to live and live courageously and courageously and to stand up and say, I am made by God in His image to do this. Get it done. When we cannot get it done, seek the help so we can get it done. And if we need more help, admit the fact that we need it. What is the color of your heart? I ask this not only the brothers here, but of the women. What is the color of your character? I don't have the answer. You do. It is all my hope and prayer that you will answer the question 
for yourselves. I wish all the brothers happy Father's Day. And may God bless you. Amen.